the DC Today. Today is Tuesday, um, February 21st, and it's the uh, first day here on Tuesday after a, a nice President's Day weekend. I hope everyone had a nice weekend with family and friends. Um, we um, uh, had actually the one of the worst, um, or actually the worst uh, down day in, mar in markets uh, so far for 2023. So there's a good amount for me to kind of walk through and, and unpack here as we get into uh, today's market action. But um, on the day, uh, the Dow ended up closing down 697 points, which was a little over 2%. The S&P was down exactly 2%, and the NASDAQ was down a pretty stunning 2.5%. So uh, pretty broad-based sell-off in stocks. The 10-year um, Treasury was up 13.5%, I'm sorry, 13.5 basis points on the day. And that was kind of the probably the largest narrative of, of the day of why it was down. Futures last night were negative, um, but not as much as the market sort of let on uh, as the day went, went on. The futures were pointing to something like a negative 300 open. And then after about two, three hours in markets, we were down obviously significantly more. We closed off the lows for the day um, a little bit, but I think if I sell the low, uh, it was down something like 710 points roughly. So just barely off of the lows. So um, the last time we were down this much was in December. So for the calendar year of 23, it's, it's kind of our, our, uh, our winner uh, for the, the, the worst uh, day in markets. I guess that's why I wrote, wore the red tie. Um, uh, kidding. The, um, but so, so let's talk about what, what caused this because it's important. Um, so interest rates today across the spectrum and, and kind of last night going into today, we're moving higher. And basically we're looking at um, uh, rate uh, rate paradigm that is is looking to be a little bit higher than it, than it otherwise would. Um, uh, the 10 year closed at 396. The two year though closed at 472. So you can kind of see how inverted the yield curve is. A two year treasury trading at 472 yield and a 10 year at 396. It's kind of supposed to be the other way around. So we have an inverted curve um, but Fed fund futures are now pricing in um, a terminal Fed funds rate of closer to 5.3, um, whereas both before, call it a couple of weeks ago, uh, it was more like a, a 5% sort of terminal rate. So if we're at about 475 or so on Fed funds, then you pretty much know that we're looking at maybe two or three more rate hikes here before we sort of hit to that terminal level. And when you price in assets, whether it's bonds or stocks or real estate or or anything, you know, anything that you want to price in, the risk-free rate is a really important um, number to factor into that equation. In other words, what can you get without risk versus what can you get with risk? And so if you get a higher rate paradigm, which is what markets are now pricing in, then you get risk assets that sell off. So today it was across the board. Oil was down. The dollar was slightly up, um, just barely. Uh, but stocks were down. Bonds were down on the day. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, there was some economic data out today that was notable, um, both in services. So we got a sort of a flash read, which is kind of a, a preliminary read into uh, PMI on manufacturing and PMI on services. Um, the manufacturing data that came in was, all, both, both of these numbers, by the way, were better than expected, um, which is a good thing. Uh, manufacturing was up 0.9% for the month at 47.8, and it was expected to be something like 472 and so while I'll say that's better than expected, just remember that f the 50 level is sort of your break even on expansion or contraction in the economy. So manufacturing is still kind of floundering here a little bit. Um, not good, not bad. I, I call it benign, I guess, would be the number um, as far as how the Fed would look at that. The services number, on the other hand, was, was quite a bit better. It was up 3.7 points for the month um, of February, which was at 50.5. And we were only expected to get to about 47. So services um, robust, much better than expected, significantly so. That's a good thing uh, for the economy. And I think that added a little bit to, to some higher rate narrative, which again, was repricing some risk assets, particularly stocks uh, uh, in, in that um, paradigm. Um, some of the input costs we saw in the services side were, uh, were significantly lower, which I think is a good thing. Um, and if you think about profit margins and businesses, if you've got sort of inflation that, you know, caused prices to get passed through and so higher prices, um, moving along to, to consumers, 
but if those input costs start to come down a little bit, I don't know that companies are going to be real fast to lower prices per se. And I think what you might get is a little bit of profit margin expansion there. Um, but that, that'll be seen. We've had um, about 80% or so of the S&P 500 has now reported. And about of the 80%, 70% of the 80 was a little bit better than expected. Um, so earnings are holding in there. But if you think about earnings growth for 2023 and what's expected, call it 2% at the most. Um, it's hard to, to have multiple expansion when you're expecting earnings to grow by 2% and the yield on the S&P is a whopping 1.7%. So it, it just, you know, the backdrop isn't, uh, you know, really robust for stock prices from here. And so that's what markets were telling us today. Um, that, um, you know, the idea that the Fed's going to pivot and then that the Fed is going to go the other way is, is starting to be taken off the uh, top off of the table here a little bit. And so that's why it, it was a little cooler day. Um, we had some existing home sales today, uh, weaker than expected, which, you know, this narrative on, on housing being weak or real estate being weak, it just sort of continues in the numbers. Um, we were expecting something like a 4.1 um, existing home sales number, and we got a four. Uh, so it was a little lower, uh, lower than expected on housing. Some top news, you know, uh, some big earnings re reports out today. Um, I, I won't go through all the individual names of the companies, but um, the largest U.S. retailer and the largest U.S. Uh, home improvement business, I'm sure you can guess what those two companies are, um, both had mixed bag as far as earnings go. They actually were fine. The earnings report was in line, but forward guidance was quite negative and, and markets um, reacted accordingly and sold. Um, you also had uh, over the weekend, I guess, you had Joe, uh, President Biden visit um, Kiev, uh, Ukraine, and support another $460 million or so of aid. And at the same time, he had Vladimir Putin give his sort of State of the Union to his parliament. Uh, and talk about the support for the war and continuing that effort and, and also to suspend its um, uh, participation or um, I guess participation will be the word in, in the um, nuclear trade uh, treaty that we have with, uh, with Russia, which in and of itself doesn't declare anything other than just they're going to not abide by, by it and recognize it as they, as they once did for many years um, for the time being. And it's just further signs of geopolitical tension. Tomorrow, we have some Fed minutes out from the last meeting, which was February 1st. And so I think that'll be most likely the topic. There isn't a lot of other economic news on the calendar. So I think that'll probably be what I talk about the most, which is what the Fed spoke about during their last meeting. And I think it will, again, uh, you know, could it move markets a bit, um, depending on dovish or hawkish? Of course it can. But um, I suspect it'll be something along the lines of, data dependency and, and, you know, keeping rates, you know, higher for longer. And so, you know, so we can see inflation kind of come down. Natty gas was down uh, about 9%, a little less, 8.8% for the day, um, which is meaningful. It's um, at a lowest level it's been in a couple of years at this point. Um, oil was slightly weaker today. I think it closed around 47.63. I'm not looking at the number, but I believe it was 47.63, something like that on the day. Um, sorry, 70, 73, <laughs> forgive me, $73, um, down about half of a percent on the day, something like that. Um, so all in all, you know, the, I'll be with you on DC today, um, today, obviously, then tomorrow, which is Wednesday and then Thursday, and then we'll have dividend cafe for you on Friday as usual. Um, a little more volatility in markets. So feel free to reach out. I, I really do appreciate you listening and watching and and feel free to, to reach out and ask me questions. I, I always appreciate it. Uh, with that, I'm going to sign off here. We're right at about nine and a half minutes. So I'm going to let you go for the evening and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening. Mm -hmm.